And so some of the benefits from cultural perspective is that a lot of our, predominantly our Māori and our Pacifica families, that would prefer to stay within their own homes, would like to stay connected to their GPs, because they've really got existing relationships with them. It gives us as an opportunity to sort of help explore that, what, what's important around their culture, or how we can help support the GP or the rescue facilities to sort of make those connections for them. And then how the families could sort of continue and do what is important for them. And so that might be um, staying within their home, um, their carers, loved ones looking after them. But how can we can help support them and provide other resources that are existing to them that they don't want to necessarily come to hospice. And it's not exclusive to just Māori and Pacifica, there are also a lot of our Asian community as well. So it's important that we cater for everybody and that we are equipped and ready for ourselves as well to support our families and so they can live the life to the fullest how they want to do it and we sort of have a, a resource only for the GP clinics and primary care and the facilities but also for the families out in the community. Poi is, um, I would say, how it's complementary is something that needs to be done you know, for our families. ACP, as we talk about, anyone can plan. But POI is, does sort of lead down the track. We're a bit further down the river. But in saying it so, that um, preparation and planning is so important. You know, our lives sort of change, and then what sort of um, prepares us, and our families especially, you know, it's hugely important because we found that some families, they, they feel that lost. And then sometimes there could be family tensions where nobody really knows what the, their loved one really wants. And so the benefit of ACP and what, what's moving throughout New Zealand now, is, it's a flow on effect. So we all through go through transitions and phases in our life and that's where POI fits quite nicely. And it also reflects on the need that's out there in the community, and especially in GP facilities, uh, GP practices and uh, rescue facilities as well. The relationship with Pietro is important because then we could sort of be together as a, not being like every other competing project, but showing that the Pietro is also leading the way and we're also um, supporting them and making sure that we're addressing the needs of the practices of the population that they particularly serve. So that's one of the priorities for us is building that relationship, building that trust with, you know, together and then from there moving forward we've found that other PHOs have been starting to implement and then put links on their own PHO websites to POI. So I think that's been um, a win and also something worth celebrating that was, was showing some kind was we all hear what the need is for the community and that everyone knows that the PHOs advocate for their practices and what's, you know, what they're crying out for as well, to help alleviate some of the stress. Our process here at Tōtara Upoi is that we all sit together and we all look at it and share, um, read the plan out, so everyone sits in the MDT team and hears it, and we all have provide input, and then, we, then someone may be allocated to lead it and then go find the research. But again, it goes around the table if anyone else wants to insert, like physio or um, medication, like from our pharmacist as well. Referring the pairs has been interesting because you start to sort of really do some research and dive in, and then it really becomes patient focused and patient centred to what their needs are and you're really sort of reading between um, some of the things that are spoken and not so spoken and just looking for suggestions. And so not only are we trying to provide and offer feedback and build capability and capacity out in the primary care, we're also building up our own learning banks as well. So it's been, it's been useful and it's, I'm being thankful for having the rest of our MDT team um, being around. And so we support each other in that space. Yeah, it's a team effort. To give an example, we had a, um, a gentleman in rescue facilities 
and he didn't have many family that were within Auckland itself and so he had gone from living independently to uh, moving into um, rest care. Some of the things he may struggled was struggling with was a language barrier and it was hugely important. Um, he was finding himself sort of quite isolated and was un unable to interact um, with many um, within the facilities. So trying to find ways that he could find connections with his family, find ways that he could hear um, and be up to date with the, um, not only from, from his country and what's happening locally, but also just the hearing the language itself is, um, was really important. So looking for things like, you know, is FaceTime a possibility? You know, utilising technology that we have these days to sort of bring some kind of comfort people, some kind of understanding, but also to give some kind of reassurance to families that are overseas or um, don't live within the region, um, that they can see their loved ones until their next visit, so it doesn't seem so a strain on the heart for both parties and of course for the facilities too, because they want to see um, their residents happy and just provide the best care they can. So it really is sort of going sometimes outside some of the usual stuff and just exploring uh, how technology can help support us and even for our elderly.